God, it feels weird sitting in front of a camera recording again. It's been a while. <laughs> been a while. Um, <clears throat> so because the Rangers just got pissed on by Buffalo two nights ago, I'm like, you know what? Let's just try to look at the future, see what's what, and put ourselves in a good mood. So what we're doing today is looking at the 2022, 2023, and 2024 New York Rangers NHL entry draft classes. Whoop, whoop. We're going to start in uh, 2022 and work our way all the way up to see what's what. Because I think we all need a happy Saturday, right? Weekend started. We ain't working. Good mood, good vibes. Let's see what's up. So Zachary Carpa, wow, he really just hasn't, uh, that guy's just been on a downward trend since he got there. What a shame. Oh, well, six round pick. Didn't really lose much on it. Max Barbershev, like, for a minute, kind of looked like he had something brewing. Like, oh, okay. Plays hard. Decent hands. Good shot. Might have something here. 32, 33, 65, and draft year plus one. It's like, oh, all right. Last year, kind of shit his pants a little bit. Didn't have a great last year. Rangers did not sign him. I believe he's, uh, I believe he's on an AHL contract right now. I, I do not believe the Rangers have actually signed him to a contract. So, yeah, he's uh, he's without a point in the coast. He's without a point, a point in the hungry league. He's a dash one in the AHL. Not looking too great for Max Barbashev. I, 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 mm, I don't know. Tough, man. It, it's just a shame that you had this season. Like, oh, wow, the Rangers might have somewhat of a steal here. And then for him to just completely and utterly fall off. His whole thing was he plays super hard, like good hands, good shot, like could be a good bottom six forward to like this guy is just almost a non-prospect at this point. It's crazy to say that about a 20-year-old, but not looking too great. I hope things work out because I love, I love the bottom six forwards that just work their bag off, have sneaky hands, sneaky scoring ability, and can, and can be a good bottom six guy. I just don't know if that path for Barbershev is likely anymore after um, – at the season he had last year. Victor Mancini. You talk about potentially the steal of the draft for the Rangers in 2022. Their fifth round pick has outperformed their entire draft class. Um, what shocked me the most about Mancini is his offensive ability. Right? Like his, his skating ability, his passing, his shot was not expecting any of that. Shocked me as much as when Braden Schneider first made the NHL, the speed, the skating. And the shooting and the passing, right? I'm not calling Braden Schneider this offensive dynamo, but Schneider being drafted as somewhat of a defensive defenseman, mean style of defense to be as good of a skater and good offensively as he is, is a little shocking to say the least to someone that didn't know much about Schneider in his draft year. Uh, Mancini probably should be in the lineup every single night, but we want to keep trotting out Lindgren and Truba. Not going to go there today, but don't tempt me. I will. I have all day today. I don't work on weekends. I have all day today and tomorrow to rant about Drew Ben Lindgren, but I won't do it. Promise. <laughs> uh, but Mancini's been freaking awesome, dude. I, I I hope I hope he works his way back in the lineup because the guy that moves as well as he does at that at his size with his raw ability, it's very it's very attractive for for a team. Like even if Mancini's ceiling is a number four, number five defenseman, that is a steal in the fifth round. Um, we'll see what happens though. I mean, four points in nine games is promising. It's just, he's not getting minutes cause he's kind of buried behind, uh, I'm bite my tongue on this one. Not going to say any more. Relax. It's a happy video. We're talking prospects. Mancini, big win. Noah Laba, who kind of barked off last year and damn two points a game this year in Colorado college. Noah Laba like quietly been sick. Right, so he gets drafted in 2022 out of the Lincoln Stars, 115 uh, pims. All right, the guy was a mucker. Goes to Colorado College, year one rookie, 22 points, 35 games, whatever. Last year, and his draft year plus two says, "Fuck it, I'm potting 20, and I'm just gonna go over a point a game. Do something about it." And then this year, he's two points a game. Noah Laba is is doing. Similar to what Morgan Barron did when the Rangers uh, drafted him in the sixth round in 2019, I think it was, or 2018. No, that'd be 2019. Uh, 2017. Oofa. Uh, but a similar trajectory. Really good, like uh, like a, an unexpectedly good freshman year, a great sophomore year, and what the makings of an excellent, an excellent junior year. 
Uh, I, I definitely think there is a path to the NHL for Noah Labba. I don't think he's the same style as Morgan Barron. I think Noah Labba has a little bit more offensive upside, less physical upside. If you can get this guy to be a high upside third liner, that's a win. If this guy is a 20 goal, 15 assists, maybe 20, 20 guy, that's a huge win for the Rangers. I, I don't think he'll be much more than that. Um, yeah, 20, 20 with, with good two way upside. And this is a massive win for the New York Rangers with Noah Laba. The kid has just been freaking excellent. And that is hilarious that Noah Laba is what we got out of Brett Howden. I love that. I just hope he's significantly better than Brett Howden is. Noah Laba, W pick. BMB. This guy's speaking of Brett Howden, pretty much another Brett Howden, not in a bad way because Brett Howden was a first round pick in the NHL that is still an NHL or today, like him or not. Um, BMB is off to a pretty decent start in Hartford this year. Four points in seven games. Um, you know what? Just a good, probably another good bottom six forward find. Uh, you, you hope for third line center upside, uh, hopefully a two way guy that could still score. Be getting you 35 to 40 points a year on your third line. This is an absolute win of a pick could maybe be molded into a fourth line role, but with Rempe Edstrom and a few other guys in this list that we're going to be taking a look at, I I'd be shocked if, if he really turn into like a fourth liner but you know we've seen it before where like skill guys come up it doesn't work out and they become quality fourth liners jimmy vc curtis lazar is a first round pick with considered fairly high upside and guys like that just develop into good fourth liners it's not out of the question this kid could end up being a really really good fourth liner i just don't see much upside above a third line role for bryce mcconnell barco in the nhl which is significantly better than 99.999% of the world. So BNB so far is a W of a pick. You know, all, you know, 97 picks into the draft, and you're looking at a, a not surefire, but high likelihood that he'll be in the NHL. Uh, Adam Sakura, hot and cold with this guy. Very Katy Perry on, uh, on Adam Sakura. There is an NHL player there. I don't know I don't, I don't know what his role in the NHL will be. He reminds me a lot of Jesper Foss in the way he plays. This is a guy you can be able to put on any line, one through four, and he's probably going to give you the same exact output on every single line. Plays hard, good skater, lots of raw talent. Uh, this kid is very, very raw, which is not a bad thing because he's putting up good numbers f for what he is, good numbers in the AHL. It's just he's very raw. So I think Sakura is probably two full years away from being an NHL player. I think he'll get games in the interim, but I think he's about two years away from being a full-time NHLer, which for a 20-year-old, having just turned 20-year-old is a good thing. Two years from today, he will be 22 years old, still a very young hockey player. I wish I was still 22 years old. I started making YouTube videos when I was 15. I'm fucking 25. How do you think I feel? I'm almost washed up. No, I am washed up. Adam Sakura has a future. Kid's going to be a good NHLer one day. I, I am not ruling him out of being a quality NHLer. I'm just saying we need to be patient, and he is still probably a couple years away from that. Moving on to the 2023 NHL draft, starting with Ty Henricks. Okay numbers in the USHL last year. Not great. Social USA, yeah, but like, yeah, it's kind of getting. You know what? Six round pick. We're not going to do it like a super deep dive on this guy. Two points and NCHC for Western Mesh. Decent start. Not really a whole lot going on there, but you know what? Whatever. Six five. He's a big body. You might get something out of this kid. Right now, he's just like, he's still a prospect, right? He's only 19 years old. He'll be 20 in June. Still a prospect. Nothing wrong with the Ty Hendricks pick right now. Not a win, not a loss, just not moved yet. Dylan Rubrik, I'm actually pretty big on, for lack of a better pun, talking about a six foot seven player. Six points in 11 games at Hartford already. So the Rangers love their big boys. He had 72 points in 101 pims in Oshawa last year. 26 points in 21 playoff games. Did he get carried a little bit? Maybe. Maybe, but 
still put up big numbers for a big boy. Now, Dylan Rubrik is a really, really tricky one to assess because I could see him being relegated to a fourth line checking forward or the more likely outcome, I think, is this is kind of similar to Edstrom, like a modern day Brian Boyle type player. Brian Boyle was a first round draft pick of the LA Kings and had offensive upside. That offensive upside never really got realized in the NHL, but the little realization that it did get was Brian Boyle parked his big ass in front of the net on power play one and power play two for years with the New York Rangers. He scored 20 goals in the NHL, consistent 30 point guy. If Dylan Rubrik could be a solid, hard four checking, two way, park your big ass in front of the net, win board battles down low, fourth liner, that is an absolute win of a pick especially because this kid has already showed he has offensive upside can get in the dirty areas plays hard and i like to pick a lot again this is it's fucking hilarious how the rangers have drafted so many big players and rempe it seems for what it's worth rempe seems to have hit he's still growing he's still young edstrom is a hundred percent hit that kid absolutely turned a corner this year this is the best i've ever seen him skate and dylan rubrik looks like a real prospect so Big fan of the rubric pick right now. Rasmus Larson. Ah. Haven't seen much out of him yet. Granted, he's only 20 years old. I do believe, I do believe he's a free agent. No, I'm thinking of someone else. I don't think he's a free agent this year. Regardless, if he were to ever do anything in the NHL, it, it would probably not be anything more than a seventh defenseman role, which again, is still an NHL player, so it's not bad. But preliminarily speaking, ah, not great. It just kind of is what it is. We'll see, though. He's still only 20 years old. He'll be 21 on February 9th. God, 2004 birth year. Jesus Christ, dude, I'm old. Um, But just not great yet. You know, it is what it is. I, we're not going to – we're just not moved yet. 2023 draft pick, he's draft year plus two right now. Not a great start, but ah, is what it is. Drew Fortescue. This – Freaking guy. Not bad. Not bad. Uh, Drew Fortescue is looking kind of like, and, and and I am not using this as an indictment. All right. So let's everyone, let's everyone calm the hell down. He's kind of looking similar to Ryan Lindgren when he was, when he was playing in NCAA. Ryan Lindgren was a very good NCAA prospect. And up until this year was a really good NHL defenseman. The guy's gotten hurt. He's gotten beat up. It is what it is. He's just slowing down, breaking down. It just happens. Drew Fortescue is not on a dissimilar projection to Ryan Lindgren. I don't know if he's going to block as many shots or get hurt as often uh, or be as much of a warrior. But right now, you are looking at a very possible number four, five, six NHL defenseman in Drew Fortescue. Probably not the number one defenseman in Boston right now, but probably the number one shutdown defenseman in Boston right now. Good player, good prospect. Great pick. Big fan so far of Drew Fortescue. That is an absolute win of a pick. Honestly, in redrafts, in future years, there is a chance you could see Drew Fortescue in a redraft falling in the high second round. Gabe Perot, boy, was I wrong about him. I still remember on draft night being like, fuck, this guy can't fucking skate. I don't think he cares that he can't skate. Because the guy was about two points a game last year on a stacked Boston team, granted. But this guy was five games less than Will Smith. Not out of the question he could have put up 11 points in five games. Not at all out of the question. He was scoring at that absurd of a rate last year that he very well could have led Boston College in scoring, being the lowest draft pick on, on, on of the big four. Not at all out of the question. And, and everyone's like, oh, including myself, like, oh, well, let's see how he does without... The William, the Will Smith, how do you do, without the Cutter Gauthier's of the world. Let, let, let's see how he responds without them. Well, he said, all right, hold my nuts. Here's 12 points in seven games to start the season. Are you still hungry? There's about 40 games left. So, yeah. Gabe Pro is doing aight. Doing aight. I, I still don't think he turns pro after this season. Unless there is a massive turnaround in skating, I think it'd be a mistake Maybe for him to turn pro immediately after uh, if his skating doesn't get better. But there is an NHL player here. I think you are looking at an incredibly high upside second line winger, possibly a first line number one power play quarterback playmaker type guy here. 
there's just a lot that still needs to be seen with his skating, especially at the NHL level. The NHL has gotten so much faster uh, in the past 10 years. It's, it's absolutely insane, you know, how much a turnaround was in the NHL. Marion Gavrick, who is one of the best skaters I, I got to watch growing up as a Rangers fan, would be a slightly above average skater in today's NHL. That says a lot because that kid wheeled. So we'll see. I'm a massive fan of Gabe Pro, and I think that there is high upside here. I think there is upside to the point where you could be looking at a, a, a number one power play guy here. We'll see what happens. I'm a big fan of Gabe Perron. Moving on to the 2024 NHL uh, draft. Rico Gredig. Gredig? Greetings? I don't know. Can't really say much yet. And the season just started. You know? If he, does, if he puts up more than four points, which he's got 12 more games to do, I guess an early getting better W, but we'll see what happens. I don't know. I'm assuming he's going to be on the World Championships again this year, so we shall see. As of right now, not moved. Indifferent is what it is. Nate Aspinall, because the Rangers just can't have enough guys that are 6'7 plus. So he's the fourth one in the system right now. Nate Aspinall, similar to Rubric, Robrick, whatever you want to call him. I don't know how to pronounce his name. I apologize. Has some offensive upside. Not as physical. A little bit more skill guy. This is like the big guy that only shoots threes. Could work out. God almighty, a 2006 birth year. I <sighs> wish I didn't look at that. Regardless, too early to call, but early goings for Flint. He's their number two guy. Can be happy with what we're seeing. You know, th this could be another one where he's probably going to end up getting molded into a bottom six NHL forward if he does turn pro. Hopefully, he gets a little bit bigger, wider, tougher. Um, it's not that big guys can't be NHL talents and NHL scores. It's just as a fifth round pick, your odds are already low at making the NHL, let alone making the NHL as a high scoring player. It does happen. It is very rare, especially someone at his size. We'll see what happens. But off the rip, not a bad pick in the fifth round. We're already seeing early showings of, res of offensive results. We just got to see the rest of his game uh, file out a little bit. Raul, the boiler, um, I thought was a good pick when they got him. Seeing 62 points, 68 games, not bad. You know, 62, 200 pounds, no Alaba size, no Alaba-esque possibly. Starts off this year. Also, he's in the QMJHL, so take his scoring with a grain of salt. Almost every drafted player ever in the QMJHL is going to score at a point of game pace. So just it's everyone, it's Justin Poirier, case in point. Uh, God, I hate how good the Hurricanes draft. It really fucking angers me. But but, th but this is how little they value QHL's, QMJHL scoring. This guy scored 50 goals in the Q show last year, and he was a fifth-round pick. So don't get too be like, oh, man, this guy's sick. He's a good player, but it's Q show scoring, so does everyone settle down? Uh, early goings, you're happy with the pick. Fourth-round guy. Don't know what you're going to get out of him. You probably need to wait two more years from the term pro play uh, AHL game before you can really make an assessment, but early goings, ah, not bad. Early goings. You're just happy with it. Last but not least, EJ Emery. Um... Everyone's calling him Keandre Miller for, for his style of skating, his speed, defensive, not a lot of offensive upside, early early lookings at least, but this kid I think could be really freaking good. The, just the, the major concern is going to be the offensive game following him to the NHL because if we have another turnover machine on defense, I... I, I I don't know what I'll do, but I'll be very upset. I'll be very annoyed. But EJ Emery so far is looking like a really good pick for the New York Rangers. Uh, I don't believe he's the number one at UND right now, but I do believe he is getting top four minutes. Um, but yeah, good pick so far. We'll see what happens. It's nothing bad yet. Uh, but yeah, well, that's uh, that'll about wrap it up. feels good to be making YouTube videos again. I know I said um, towards the end of summer, I really wanted to be a more consistent uploader. It's hard. It's hard working a full-time job, living an hour from home, both ways. Just sucks. But you know what? We're rocking. It's fun to make a video. It's fun to go over Rangers prospects. Rangers play today. Let's hope they don't disappoint us. I beg of you. My mental state begs you. 
But thank you guys for watching. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hopefully I can make more videos. Comment down below your thoughts on the Rangers prospects that were drafted in the last three years. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.